Hello and welcome to Cosmology, the Study of the Universe, its origin, its nature, its evolution, and its possible future. My name is Fulvia Fiorani. This video is a brief introduction to a six-part lecture series on the nature of our universe. These lectures were originally presented for the Osher Lifelong Learning Institute at the University of South Florida. And as such, they are intended for a general audience. In other words, no prior knowledge of math or physics is required to enjoy these lectures. In this introductory video, I will summarize the overall lecture series, and then each individual lecture will have its own separate video. First of all, what is cosmology? Well, cosmology is the scientific study of the universe as a whole. It attempts to answer questions such as, what is the origin of the universe? What is it made of? What was it like when it was young? How has it changed and evolved over time? And how will it change in the future? These are the questions at the heart of cosmology. So let's see how we will attempt to answer these questions through the course of these six lectures. The first lecture is a brief history of the study of the universe. This lecture will outline the history of the study of the universe following a chronological path of scientific discoveries, technological advancements, and progress in theoretical work from the ideas of the ancient Greek astronomers and philosophers to our current knowledge of modern cosmology today. This first lecture will also serve as a historical backdrop upon which all the other lectures will unfold. The second lecture is the Big Bang Theory and the Evolution of Our Universe. The Big Bang Theory is our current cosmological theory that describes how the universe emerges from an initial extremely hot and dense state, a moment which we call the Big Bang, and evolves into the cold and sparsely populated universe of stars and galaxies we see today. First we will see how the theory came about, then we will travel nearly 14 billion years back in time to see how the universe evolves through expansion and the action of gravity to form the first stars, galaxies, clusters of galaxies, and growing into what is known today as the cosmic web. And finally we will also explore the possible future of the universe. In the third lecture, we will explore the very early universe. Although today cosmological change occurs on a very long time scale, in the early universe things happen very fast. We will see that all the particles of ordinary matter that make up our universe were formed just fractions of a second after the Big Bang. The first light atomic nuclei formed within the first few minutes after the Big Bang. And the first neutral atoms of hydrogen and helium formed 380,000 years after the Big Bang. This is the critical time when light was first able to freely travel throughout the universe, so the universe becomes transparent for the first time. This is the oldest light in the universe, and we are still bathed in it today. Although we cannot see it with our eyes because its wavelength has been stretched by cosmic expansion to the microwave range, we can detect it. We see this light today as the cosmic microwave background, as seen in this map. We will see throughout this lecture series that this light provides us with a wealth of information about the universe. Lectures 4 and 5 are on stellar evolution. You might wonder why we talk about stellar evolution in the context of the universe as a whole. But stars play an important role in the evolution of the universe. The Big Bang mainly produces hydrogen, helium, and trace amounts of a few other light nuclei. All the other elements found in nature are produced by stars during their lifetimes. We will see that stars produce elements up to iron in their cores. 
then disperse the elements throughout the universe as they die. In part one, we will see how and where stars are born, how they live out their stable life phase, and then we will see how an average star, such as our sun, will die quietly shedding its outer layers as a beautiful planetary nebula, and then slowly fading away as a white dwarf. Stars such as our sun can produce elements up to car carbon in their cores. But to produce the heavier elements, we need more massive stars. And so in part two, we will see how these massive stars produce the heavier elements in their cores and then die a very violent death in a massive explosion known as a supernova, dispersing all the elements produced within their cores and the elements beyond iron produced during the explosion itself into the surrounding environment, seeding the universe with the elements that form future stars, planetary systems, and indeed all the elements required for life on Earth. The stellar corpses left over from these supernova explosions are neutron stars, pulsars, and of course, black holes, which are ultimately the focus of this lecture. The last lecture is on dark matter and dark energy, the most mysterious stuff in the universe. Everything that we will have talked about up to now, all the hundreds of billions of galaxies, each containing hundreds of billions of stars, in other words, all of the ordinary matter in the universe makes up only 5% of the universe. The remaining 95% is made up of dark matter and dark energy, and yet we know so little about it. So in this lecture, we will attempt to answer questions such as, what is this stuff? If we can't see it, how do we know it's out there? How does it affect the evolution of our universe? And how will it affect its future? The most exciting answer to these questions is, we simply do not know. Before we end this introduction, I'd like to mention two more things. The first is that when we talk about the universe, we are really talking about our observable universe. So what do we mean by that? The observable universe is a finite part of the universe that in principle we can observe from Earth. In other words, it is the light from all the contents of the universe that has had time to reach us. Because the Big Bang was a finite time in the past, and because the speed of light is a finite value, there is only so much of the universe that we can possibly see. Some parts of the universe are too far away for the light emitted since the Big Bang to have had enough time to reach Earth. In other words, light from objects outside of this finite part would have to travel faster than the speed of light to reach us, and therefore we cannot see it. So the observable universe is a spherical volume centered on the observer. In our case, our observable universe is centered on Earth. Now this is not to say that we are at the center of the universe, but we are at the center of our observable universe. It is very important to note that every location in the universe has its own observable universe, which may or may not overlap the one that is centered on us. The radius of our observable universe, accounting for 13.8 billion years of cosmic expansion, is 46.5 billion light years. And so the size or the diameter of our current observable universe is 93 billion light years across. This is a very nice illustration of our observable universe with the solar system in the center. As we look out deeper and deeper into space, first we see the stars in our own galaxy, then nearby galaxies, then distant galaxies, the cosmic web, and finally we are surrounded by the oldest light in the universe, the cosmic microwave background. 
So once again, our observable universe is the finite part of the universe that we can, in principle, observe from Earth. And every location in the universe has its own observable universe centered on its location. The second thing is a very clever bumper sticker that I saw many years ago. And it went like this. The Big Bang Theory. God said, let there be light, and bang, it happened. Now, besides being a clever way of tying faith and science together, this gives me the opportunity to say that although both my faith and science are very important to me, and I find a beautiful harmony between the two, in these lectures, we will focus only on the scientific study of how the universe evolved over time. And we will leave the deeper question of why it came into being to philosophy and theology. I hope this brief introduction has stimulated your interest in learning a little bit more about our beautiful and amazing universe. If so, please join me in this six-part lecture series. If you would like to receive automatic notifications of when these or any future lectures are posted, please subscribe to this channel. Hope to see you next time, and thank you for watching.